We've had a major update to our maze tool. This is Sydney Manier from A Duda Book Creator, and I'm going to show you all the cool new shapes that you can create mazes in with our tool. To get to the tool, click on Activity Books, Maze Puzzle Tool. As with all of our tools, you want to start by setting the trim size of your book. I'm going to use 8.5 by 11. You can also set the number of solutions you want to have in each one of your answer pages. You can pick between four, two, and one. I'm going to leave that at four. Now if we do an update, you can still control the font and size for the text, and that's done under Titles, Word Settings. I'm going to switch this to Roboto font. I'm going to make my title a little bit bigger and the ones on the bottom a little bit bigger. So let's see what that looks like. All right, I like the way that looks, so I'm going to leave that. Now let's go talk about all the new shapes that you have available. So in addition to just having the straight rectangles like this, you can now have triangles in a rectangular shape. And this is what that looks like. Isn't that cool? You can also do hexagons. And this is what that looks like. It's one of my favorites. I like that a lot. Of course, you can still control the maze width and the maze height and where you want to start and where you want to end. But one of the cool new things that we've added is that now, instead of ending at the bottom, you can end in the middle. And then you can control the width of the space inside. So right now it's set to 11 for the width and 16 for the height. And that's going to give you a really big space here. This could be fun if you wanted to put some other graphics inside the middle. And in that case, you'd probably not want your in-text to be here. You can get rid of that by going to Titles, Words, and Settings and just put a space there or just delete it all together. Then if you refresh, you see that that goes away. So now you don't have that word there. So that's always an option for you. Depending on what you want to do, you can do that. I'm going to put it back and show you what it looked like with a smaller area here. So for the middle width, I'm going to go with three and the height, I'm uh, going to go with four. And this is what that looks like. So now you go from the start into the middle. And you can, of course, do that with any one of our shapes here with a triangle and with the rectangle. So that alone gives you six different types of mazes, but we didn't stop there. No, we have even more shapes. If you click on here, you see we have diamonds, triangles, hexagons, and circles. Let's go look at the diamond option. So with the diamond, you also have the option for rectangles, triangles, and hexagons inside. Let's look at it with just rectangles first. And you can also go from the start to the middle or from the start to the bottom. And we have the same options available for triangle on the inside. And you can go in the middle with that as well. And for hexagon. That's what it looks like to the middle or to the bottom. Besides diamonds, we have triangles. And with the triangle, you have the option of having the point at the top like this one or the point at the side, which would look like this. And of course, with both of these, you can choose to go from the start to the bottom or the start to the middle. This is what it looks like with this side on the top and here's what it looks like with a side in the middle. So that gives you another four different types of looking mazes. Let's go look at the hexagon. So with the hexagon, you can choose to have the point at the top like this one or have it at the side, which would look like this. And of course, you can also choose between going in the start to the middle or start to the bottom. 
And with the hexagons, you can also have triangle shapes inside, and this is what that looks like. And you can also do that one to the middle. And you can smooth that to the point on the top. So this gives you lots of flexibility to create lots and lots of different shapes of, of mazes. And you can even do circles. Now with the circles, you set the radius. In this case, it's 20. And you can set three different kinds of difficulties. So if you have the radius of 20 and you set hard, it's going to look something like this. If you set the maze radius smaller, let's do 15, then it's not quite as hard. So the, the larger you do the radius, the more difficult it is to solve. And here would be a medium one of that. And then you can also, instead of ending in the middle, you can have it end at the bottom on the circles as well. And that would look something like that. So I've lost count of all the different types of maze shapes you can do. There's a whole lot of them. So you can create just tons and tons of types of maze books just by mixing and matching all the different shape options here. It, that doesn't even include the difficulty levels that you can do and the different um, where you're starting and ending in the mazes. So you have all these different options and it's kind of fun to play with it. So go and play with all the different variables. And in the next video, I'm going to show you what this elitism and river tendency means and how you can use these two variables to really drill down in the difficulty of your mazes and decide whether you want them to be really easy mazes or really hard mazes. And it's a lot of fun and it gives you lots of flexibility. So tune in for the next video and I'll talk more about how to do that.